Thank you for that introduction. Uh, LTEC, for those who are not familiar with LTEC, is a company based in uh, Drammen, where we also have our main R&D center with about 100 uh, people. Uh, worldwide, we have about 40 offices with, in total, uh, 2,500 people. Now we are a part of the Delta uh, group. Um, I'm here to talk about a topic that my company and I are very passionate about, and that is how to develop technologies, power conversion technologies that can enable um, distributed energy storage to make the grid smarter and greener. And here comes the main takeaway from my presentation. If you want more new renewable energy into the grid, you need power flexibility. Secondly, distributed energy storage can be a very effective tool for that flexibility, that power flexibility. And then the logic goes, if we can develop technologies that make distributed energy storage, the grid um, smarter in a, in, in a cost-effective way, then actually we will be able to remove one of the main barriers for more renewable energy in a cost-effective way. To um, illustrate, uh, or as a soft introduction to the need of this flexibility, looks, let's look at the uh, one-minute um, documentary clip from our broadcaster NRK. <laughs> I Norge finns det over 300 strømproducenter som tillsammans lager over 80 terawattimer ström som sendes ut på det norske strømnettet. Den strømmen som blir till overs ender opp til destruering hos norsk sluttstrøm. 340 watt opp, det er to der! 140 watt! De ansatte på norsk sluttstrøm kombinerer ulike husholdningsapparater for å bruke opp denne jaktige mengden med innkommende reststrøm. 100 watt! På den tavla bak meg her kan vi hele tiden lese hvor mye overskuddstrøm som kommer inn til oss. Å si at det kommer inn 73 watt, da må gutta der ute sette på 60 watt pluss 10 watt, og noe som tar 3 watt. Da må vi skru håndtøvsugeren når vi trenger 300 watt fra den. 1, 2, og... Der, ja. Du var der. Midt på dagen så er det ganske rolig her, men ut på ettermiddagen, når folk kommer hjem fra dag i middagsmat og sånn, da varierer overskuddstrømmen såpass at da kan det bli ganske ektisk her. 130 det! 130! Jeg har kontroll på det! 100! Ja, det var i Norwegian, men jeg tror alle har fått det poenget her. Og det poenget er at det elektrisitet systemet trenger alltid å balansere powergenerasjonen med powerkonsumsjonen. Traditionelt gjør man noen reserves, både på generasjonssiden og på konsumsjonssiden. But uh, having these capacity reserves can either be costly or in some cases also impractical. So now comes a couple of animations of grid challenges where batteries could uh, be a part of the solution. The first uh, animation illustrates what happens if a big power load, uh, power producer fails, then you see that the frequency of the grid suddenly drops. Uh, and, and the power producer could, for example, also be a wind or solar plant. Um, likewise, if a big load on the grid fails, then you also see that the grid frequency suddenly increases. Such um, frequency variations, sudden frequency variations can damage equipment and it can also generate a cascade of generator trips and eventually a blackout. So sudden grid frequency variations must be avoided. So then, if you happen to have batteries in the grid, and again, the power producer fail, then these batteries can step in as a virtual power plant and produce the required power suddenly and then limit the grid frequency uh, deviation. And at the and likewise, if a big load again fails, then these batteries could be a big virtual load. 
This um, animation is from a larger uh, frequency control area, like, for example, Scandinavia or Great Britain or Western mainland Europe. The next animation is a completely different one, and that is from a local distribution grid where we could have bottleneck issues. And bottlenecks could appear some places, some times of the day, due to more and more distributed uh, energy generation. Another bottleneck uh, could uh, arise when people get home from work, put their electric vehicle to charging, and switch on the induction stove and maybe direct water heater. Then we could have a bottleneck to provide the necessary power. And again, if we have these uh, batteries around, they could, uh, they could take up the excess power generation if they are on the right side of the bottleneck or they could provide the required uh, power during high demand peaks. So these were just a couple of examples of grid challenges. A question is then, to what extent are these challenges considered as important internationally? Two examples, the first one from California, and here is the famous to some, uh, duck curve or duck charge from California. Let me just explain uh, what this is. <clears throat> this uh, along the y-axis is the megawatt and along the x-axis it's the hours of the day. And the curves, they show what the net load is. That means the demand on the grid minus the variable energy production, for example, from solar plants. And each curve shows what will be the situation as more and more solar energy are installed so from 2012 through 2020. And then we get this uh, shape of a duck. And we can note a couple of challenges here. So for example, in 2012, we see that in the middle of the day, the net load is so low that we might risk that the total production is higher than the, than the total load due to very slow varying base production generators. Another problem is in the evening when the solar energy stops to produce and people get home, then we see that uh, we get very rapid requirements to the generators and they have to supply the double of the production from the day, uh, from the middle of the day. So this represents also a very large challenge to, to traditional power generators. So um, if, you, if you need a mental image from this presentation about uh, what one of the challenges is, think of, of a duck. Um, not a chicken, a duck. Another example is from Japan, another country with high ambitions. Um, there um, we see already now that uh, that the PV installations uh, are uh, halted due to limited f grid flexibility and capacity. So this article from January showed that uh, 2000, no, um, 17.5 gigawatt of projects, may go, no, um, of projects are set to be left stranded, and those are already approved feed-in tariff uh, solar projects. But it said that um, some of these may go ahead if we have battery storage capacity included as a part of the project. So then we have established that um, there is a need for flexibility and that batteries can represent a tool. So let's uh, introduce then now power conversion technologies to the scene. These are the type of power converters that Eltec are making. They look like uh, this. In this example, it's a two kilowatts rectifier from the grid to charge batteries and also provide power to a load. And the nice thing is that these um, systems like this you find everywhere in the distribution grid already now, typically as a backup systems. In our case, mostly to telecom, but also to other industrial critical infrastructures. 
And, and these power systems, uh, power converters, can be, they are modular and scalable, and they can be put into systems that you see connect grid to loads and batteries and also to other producers. The problem is only that traditionally the power goes only from the grid into the system, not back. And that is why we now have received support from the Research Council to s develop a new type of power converter that is bi-directional. So this bi-directional power converter that might enable a lot of these distributed battery systems to provide additional services to the grid. So, in order to think outside the box of what opportunities we can use these distributed energy storage systems for, let's peep inside the, the box and see what technology is inside there. So this is... Um, a picture of what's inside, and there you would find um, power components uh, like uh, inductors, capacitors, and switching uh, devices. And they are selected, dimensioned, combined, and controlled through digital control, so that the wanted input to those boxes and wanted output from these boxes uh, are as required with as minimum power losses as possible. Um, and, and, and this really requires lots of uh, technologies that I don't go into detail now. But the key is to combine several requirements. One thing is the functionality. That will be now very important if we would like to fit power back to the grid. There will be a lot of grid codes you have to adhere to, and you should be able to combine several energy storage applications in one. And there are, according to Sanya uh, in the US, 23 distinct applications of distributed energy storage systems. So functionality is one, but that should be combined with high efficiency, high density, high reliability, and last but not least, as low cost as possible. Because again, the key to distributed energy storage as a solution to more renewable energy to the grid is a cost-effective solution. Um, and again, this will require a lot of different cutting-edge technologies, uh, like control, power electronics design, and also material technologies, because material technologies could develop these components to be more functional and provide higher efficiency. And we have a cooperation with the University in Trondheim, on, no, in the University of Oslo, sorry, uh, on, uh, on um, new material technologies for wide band gap semiconductors. So, um, with this, I think it's uh, appropriate for me to end uh, this talk with the slogan of of our new owner, Delta, and they have the slogan, Smarter, Greener, Together. And smart power converters are required to provide the power flexibility for a greener grid. And I claim that all cutting, tech, uh, cutting edge technologies meet in this box, and they must work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ole Jakob. Um, Marianne, the, what are you thinking about? I'm thinking about that box. <laughs> it's already here. Yeah. Is it in use? This one is in use. We produce about 500,000 of these already. That's for the rectifier part, not the bi-directional one is in, under development. We have a prototype now. Okay. Uh, where do you expect to sell the new one, most of them? In uh, Germany, for instance? Yeah, to take the segment first, it's natural for us to at least try to sell it in our current main market, like Telecom. Okay. And to just give you an idea about the capacity there, for example, Telecom Italia, which is one of our customers, they are Ita Italy's second largest electricity consumer. 
only beaten by the railway. So telecom is actually a big load already, and they have one gigawatt hours of battery capacity in the grid now. So it would be interesting to see if telecom operators would like to use what some of them call their lazy assets in a more active way. But of course, if we have that technology, there are lots of spin-off opportunities also in residential, commercial, industrial, etc. Yeah, just to, to follow up on that, uh, the, am I to understand that the battery capacity uh, primarily is in telecoms, while other industries or, or, or even residential areas don't have the battery capacity to, to use this two-way uh, two solution? Not yet, but we see that some uh, innovators from the US are going to develop that type of market. Uh, uh, and it will come, but it's, um, it's not easy because, as the previous speaker was talking about, batteries are not very suited if you are trying to time shift a lot of energy. That's why I'm always talking about power services. That's when they make more sense. So just time shifting energy from, for example, uh, high tariff periods to low tariff periods might not be a very good business case. Okay. Uh, the question you have, or, or you, you show the example with where you could have a battery to every single house or home in the future. And, and sort of my question is to, will this in the future enable houses, you see it in, in certain parts of Africa already, where sort of villages are sort of disconnecting from the grid because they have their own energy mm. uh, systems and they store their own energy and they, they are not dependent on the grid whatsoever. So if this is a sort of more, uh, more common in the future, where do you see the grid mm. in, in this entire sort of system? Mm. Yes, so um, you're talking about microgrid, and to me a microgrid is also a, a grid, and maybe it needs even further flexibility, power flexibility, than a large uh, grid like whole Western Europe. So I see a very big role for batteries and smart power converters, also for microgrid applications. And the future for the grid in such emerging markets could be that you start by developing microgrids in a scalable way, start with some production, some loads, and then eventually, and that we see many places, suddenly the load uh, surpasses the production and you get a very unreliable microgrid. Hence, if you have a flexible, scalable, modular system that you can just add on uh, both distributed PV and energy storage along as the, uh, as the demand increases, then you could maybe have a better and more reliable microgrid concept that again could merge together in a larger grid somehow of interconnected microgrids. Anyway, it's a, it's a big opportunity for um, cutting edge technologies in um, power conversions and distributed energy storage. Great. Thank you, Ole Thank you very much.